What's happening, everyone? Welcome to Setup Wars, episode 287. A uh, real quick reminder, the Setup Wars season six intro contest is still going on and you have until the end of April 30th to submit your intros. Whether it's a quality intro or a potato intro, there's still a chance to win some money. More details will be linked below, along with the video on how to enter Setup Wars if you guys wanna participate. But yeah, with that said, sit back and relax. Cause you know what time it is. As you guys know, the Setup Wars Intro Contest is still going on, where the winner will take home $200 for the best intro and $100 for the worst intro. But if you guys still need help on creating an intro, then today's sponsor will definitely help you out. Storyblocks has over 1 million assets in their library to help you create content, whether it's for your YouTube channel, Instagram, TikTok page, or for this intro contest, Storyblocks has you covered. Long before they even sponsored the channel, I've actually been using them to find music for my videos, which you're currently listening to right now. Not only do I get most of my music from their audio library, but I also use their really cool 4K footage to spice up my videos. The abstract background stuff is some of my favorite content that I use oftentimes, but they offer a lot of other useful content like images, After Effects, and Premiere Pro templates, which can be very useful for the intro contest. Their unlimited all access plan gives you unlimited downloads and the best part is that all the assets are royalty free. So once you download them, you can use them whenever and wherever you want. They have subscriptions for every budget so you can pick a plan that's right for you. So definitely go check them out at storyblocks.com slash techsource or just click my link below. Kicking off the episode is a beautiful floating ultra wide setup from Airy. He's an automotive detailer from Canada who built this setup in the span of one month for the purpose of gaming, photo editing, and sim racing. The focal point is of course the CRG9 super ultra wide monitor from Samsung that is mounted beautifully against the wall right beside both of his speakers and you can't really tell because of the lighting but he ran the speaker cables across the wall and into the back of the monitor using a few raceways. Since they are in white, the light reflects off of them, essentially allowing them to blend in with the wall. Very nice. The desk he's using is also slightly modded. We got a Saljan countertop from Ikea, however he did wrap it in wood for a more consistent look with the rest of his room. We got a drop control keyboard with lubed Glorious Pandas and a Logitech G502 Proteus mouse for the peripherals. And for audio, aside from the wall-mounted edifiers, he also owns a pair of Astro A50s for gaming. For once, I'm very happy to see someone use two giant racks to help out with cable management. Sometimes you gotta go big to deal with a large amount of wires. I gotta say, I do love the custom work that was put into this setup the most. The self-made and painted hexagon panels with the Wolf logo in the center add a nice element of art into the setup, especially with those cool looking wall shelves. I feel like everything complements each other very nicely. The PC powering it all is a custom build inside the Neo Cube with a unique Gohan Super Saiyan 2 color scheme. It's packing the Ryzen 7 3700X and an MSI RTX 3070 Gaming X Trio. I do appreciate the subtle hints of personality scattered across the setup, as opposed to having everything condensed in one area. It's a very tasteful setup that's executed quite well, and it's definitely a huge improvement over your last setup a few years ago. Thank you, Ari, for coming on the show. Here's a pretty sweet dual setup for streaming by Auric from Ontario, Canada. So he's a student that's really into competitive gaming, so he built himself a battle station basically in the span of one year so that he can take his gaming to the next level. But that's not all. The setup is also used for video editing, graphic design, and of course, you can't forget about the schoolwork. We have a quad monitor setup with the center being a 360 hertz refresh rate display sandwiched by a mix of 24 and 25 inch displays. However, I do find the monitor layout interesting and why is the top one off? Everything is hooked up to a motorized base with an IKEA style John countertop and above that we got the SteelSeries Apex Pro keyboard with two pairs of Logitech G Pro mice. I'm assuming one for each of his PCs. I'm also going to assume since he has a single keyboard, he uses a USB switcher to swap between both PCs when he needs to. Very smart decision to avoid cluttering up the desk. And lastly for audio, he kept things very simple and just stuck with his DT990 Pros for gaming. My guy is decked out with streaming gear. Not just any streaming gear, but the industry standard, okay? We got the Shure SM7B mic hooked up to a full-size GoXLR 
with an additional XLR Mini on the side and the Elgato Stream Deck XL. He's definitely not messing around here. He's even got a nice Sony Alpha series camera as the webcam. You can definitely tell he is taking competitive gaming very seriously and I respect that. Even the cable management is on point. We got two PCs with four monitors and it's on a motorized desk and the fact that he has everything under control here is very impressive. So then, let's talk about the PCs. Naturally, the main gaming rig is on the right side and it's packing some really nice specs like the i9 10900K and an RTX 2080 Super while the streaming PC has a 10900F and an RTX 2070 Super. You see, this is how you spec a dual PC streaming setup. I'm looking at you, Nick. As amazing as this setup looks, I do have to admit it's lacking any type of personality. It's very cookie cutter and there is nothing that really separates this from all the other streaming setups. You know, don't be afraid to spice it up a bit and make it your own. Regardless, it's a kick-ass dual PC setup. Thank you, Arik, for entering and good luck on your streaming, my guy. Next up is Edison from Hong Kong and his very compact setup. And the main reason why I'm featuring it in this episode is because I really think it could help inspire others watching that want to build a setup but don't quite have the space for it. You see Edison is a student from Hong Kong and it appears that this is in his dorm room. Well, he really wanted to build a setup where he can edit his videos, play some games and do his schoolwork, but he was limited in space as you can clearly see. If you pay close attention, you can see how close the desk is to his bed. In fact, it's oddly satisfying how perfectly the bed and Linman top fit against the wall. Like there's barely any space between them. It definitely looks like he made all the right decisions in order to build the setup he wanted, like tilting one of the monitors in vertical mode to make room for dual displays and adding a wall shelf up top for his PC. Really, really, really great use of space here. For peripherals, he's rocking a custom keyboard with Telios and two pairs of mice. We got the MX Master 3 for productivity and the Viper Ultimate for gaming. You might not be able to see them, but he does own a set of Creative Pebble speakers tucked away behind the monitors and a Corsair Virtuoso headset that he has sitting up top. He's even able to fit in a microphone and full-size boom arm. Personally, I would have stacked both monitors to free up room on the sides for the speakers, but that's just my preference. Cables are managed very well using a single rack and a few cable clips to help with the routing. And I love that you have a few extra cables stashed under here for easy access. Finishing up with the custom PC up top, we got an i7-8700K paired with a Gigabyte RTX 2070. I think this setup can serve as a perfect example that building your dream setup, or maybe just any gaming setup, is still possible even with limited space. Thank you Edison for sharing this with us. Up next is Jerry from Indonesia and his very first gaming setup. During COVID, he got tired of just watching anime and YouTube videos, so he decided to build his very first gaming PC so that he can play Final Fantasy XIV with his friends. How wholesome. While I do have to admit there are some distracting aspects of the setup, it's still awesome to see some fresh meat once in a while. Welcome to the PC Master Race, by the way. So aside from gaming and watching content, he also uses the setup for work. We got a 34 inch ultra wide as the main and a secondary 27 inch on the side, both curved, which is nice since you get that seamless transition from one display to the other. Both monitors are also mounted to his custom made L desk. It looks like Jerry ditched the wires altogether and went wireless for his peripherals. We got the Red Dragon K596 keyboard with some sweet Genshin Impact keycaps. Remember how addicted I was to that game for like a couple months? Good times. And then we got the Logitech G Pro mouse with that. Even though you dish the wires for the gear, I can't help but point out the obvious cables from the speakers and behind the PC. I think if you just used white cable clips instead, it wouldn't have been that obvious. But a much cleaner solution would have been to use thin cable raceways. The PC power in the setup looks really good and complements the colors of the setup quite nicely. It's packing a Ryzen 7 3700X and an RTX 3070 from iGame. Considering this is your first ever build and setup, I'm actually very impressed. Of course, it's not perfect and it will need some adjustments to improve, but really great start so far. Thank you, Jerry, for sharing this with us. Well, 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 look who we have here. If it isn't Kobe from episode 198, the person who also took home the 25th seal of approval. It seems like he has downsized quite a bit with his new and improved setup, and I gotta say, I'm in love with his new direction. First off, I love that he got rid of some of the shelves with the figurines. I feel like it was a bit too much and it was cluttering the space a lot. I mean, sure, there are still a bunch of collectibles up top, but he did clean up the area near the setup and then got rid of the two risers on the top. 
He also downsized three of his monitors to a single ultra ride, and since he mounted it to the desk, he no longer needed the monitor riser. I was a big fan of the custom made desk, so it's nice to see that he kept it, but he removed the white vinyl from the top to expose more of the awesome wooden table. The colors are more balanced this time around. I can't quite figure out what it is exactly, but this setup feels more mature in a way. There are still a few figurines up on the top shelf, but it's not overdone. It's got just the right amount to personalize the setup, which is what I love to see. He also upgraded both of his peripherals. He dished the rack lamp gear and picked himself up a modded keyboard with a Logitech G Pro X that he skinned to match the rest of the colors in the setup. Nice. Symmetry is also very important to Kobe, it seems. We got two RGB lights on both sides and custom hangers for his headset and PS4 controller. The cable management is still great, just like before, no complaints. The built-in rack was such a great idea on helping some of the wires stay hidden. And then finally, we got the PC powering the new setup. It's still mostly the same build, but with a new case and an upgraded graphics card. The RTX 3070 Vision, which complements everything in the setup so nicely. There's just one thing I'm a bit disappointed in. I didn't see the seal of approval anywhere. You know, it would have been nice to see a picture of it, regardless if you keep it near the setup or not. But either way, I'm really digging your new setup and nice to see you back on the show, my guy. As a reminder, you guys can always pick up a cheap Windows CD key for less than $15. Just click on my link below and use the code TS20 for an extra 20% off. Once you get your CD key, just visit the activation settings in Windows and change your product key. It's that simple. And that will do it for today's video. As always, make sure you guys comment below. Let me know which of these setups was your absolute favorite. Season 5 is ending really soon. Uh, I hope you guys aren't going to miss it too much. But if you are, let me know by dropping a like. And if you guys are new here, consider subscribing. Because I do host Setup Wars every single Monday. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.